Wait, wait for it. And there it is. Hello, Vulkan developers. Today, we are going to render our first triangle. In the previous video, we learned how to set up a vertex and fragment shaders, but we haven't really done anything with them. In OpenGL, once the different shaders are linked into a shader program, all you need to do is simply call glUseProgram on that program handle, and it will be used for all the future draw commands until you change it. So you can switch shader programs independently from other state changes, such as frame buffer and texture bindings, enabling or disabling various features and etc. The system will dynamically adapt to all these changes. It doesn't really need to know what's coming. But Vulkan doesn't have that sort of a state machine, and Vulkan doesn't like surprises. It wants to know everything up front. The solution is a pipeline object, and more specifically, a graphics pipeline object. There is also a compute pipeline object, which is very similar in principle, but today we will focus on the graphics side. This object is going to be the largest that we have seen so far, in terms of all the stuff in it. It will encapsulate most of the state which is required for executing a draw command. This includes the topology, the render pass, dimensions of scissor and viewport, culling, multi-sampling and blending info, and don't forget, information about all the shader stages. This pipeline object will be part of the command buffer and will provide all the information that the draw operation requires to execute correctly. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to say a big thank you to Koopa Joe Man, who recently joined the 3D Underground. If you too would like to support this channel, you can do that at patreon.com slash OGLDev or by joining the YouTube channel as a member. Okay, let's start on the application side as usual. And there are not a lot of changes here because most of the changes are in a new class called Graphics Pipeline, which is why we need to include this new header with the declaration of this class. Now let's jump to the private section of the Vulkan app class. As you can see, we have a pointer to this uh, graphics pipeline, which is also part of the OGL Dev VK namespace, same as all the other variables from the, from the Vulkan core uh, project. So this is our pointer to the pipeline. Now let's see how to initialize it. In the init function, as you can see, there is a slight change of ordering here. Previously, the shaders were created last, but the only reason is that this was the last tutorial. Now we have to create the shaders first, before the pipeline, because we need the shaders in order to create a pipeline. And then we create and record the command buffers, because we will need a pipeline there. Okay, so first the shaders, then the pipeline, and finally the command buffers. So let's see create pipeline. As you can see, we allocate a new instance of this class and it needs five parameters, okay? The logical device, the window, the render pass, and the two shaders, which we already have here from the previous tutorial. Now, when we record the command buffers, we have a loop here over all the command buffers for each image. We begin the command buffer, we begin the render pass, and then we need to bind the command buffer, the current command buffer, to the pipeline. And then all the draw commands that come after that will use this pipeline. As you can see here, we have a call to VKCMD draw, which is the Vulkan equivalent of GL draw arrays in OpenGL. So basically binding the pipeline to the command buffer sets the state for all the consecutive draw commands. This is of course a wrapper to the actual Vulkan API, which we will see later on. Now CMD draw is very similar to its OpenGL counterpart with two main differences. The first one is that it needs the command buffer. Okay, it doesn't just go into the wild <laughs> like in OpenGL, it needs to be recorded into a specific command buffer. And in terms of the parameters, this function also supports instancing. As you can see here, we have the instance count and the first instance. Okay, so in OpenGL, we have two separate functions or sets of functions for handling 
instancing and non-instance draws, but in Vulkan, you can use the same function for that. So I've written all the parameters here in a very verbose manner, just because this is educational content, you don't need to, to follow this type of convention. So first we have the vertex count, which is a three for a single triangle. Then we have the instance count, which is of course one in this case. Then we have the first vertex, which allows you to start rendering from not the first vertex in the buffer, not using it here, so using zero. And the same thing with the first instance. You can start not on the first instance, okay? Okay, now let's see the declaration of the new class, the graphics pipeline. This class has three private attributes. The first one is the device. This is just for convenience, for calling different functions. Then we have the handle of the pipeline and we have the handle of the pipeline layout. This handle kind of aggregates all the descriptors of the resources that are connected to the shaders, such as textures and uh, various buffers. As you shall see, we're not going to use it much today, but we need it to create a pipeline. Now the constructor takes these five parameters. Let me shorten the line here. But I should warn you that it's going to grow dramatically over the next few tutorials. Because as I said, the pipeline contains a lot of state. And of course, we need these items when we create the pipeline. But for now, we can do with these five. As you can see, this is kind of hard coded for a vertex shader and a fragment shader. In the future, I'd like to keep this class flexible to handle multiple scenarios. So this will probably change into a vector where you can provide the dynamic number of shader handles. By the way, the only shader which is absolutely required is the vertex shader. The rest are optional from the point of view of Vulkan. Now the main function that we're going to use is of course bind, which takes the command buffer handle as a parameter. Okay, so now let's jump into the class right here, Vulkan graphics pipeline CPP. So I'm going to jump to the end of the constructor just to show you that the function that creates the graphics pipeline is called create graphics pipelines. Okay, it can create multiple pipelines. And the main thing here is the graphics pipeline create info. And as you can see, this includes the stages, which are basically the shaders, vertex input state, input assembly state, viewport, rasterization, and a bunch of other stuff. So this entire piece of code is just to set up all these parameters. Okay, so we start by saving the device for later, and then we set up the pipeline shader stage create info. This is an array with one element per shader stage. So for each element, we need to specify the shader stage, and we have a bunch of bits for that. So all the usual suspects, okay, the vertex, tessellation, geometry, fragment compute, as well as a few specialized bits, such as these bits which belong to NVIDIA, as well as Huawei. How did they get in here? So in our case, we use the vertex and the fragment bit. Next, we need to set the module, which is the handle of the shader, okay, VS and FS. And finally, we need to set the entry point to the shader. Okay, this is interesting because in GLSL, the entry point is always main. But in the Vulkan version of GLSL, you can actually provide multiple entry points in the same shader file and then reference the specific one um, using this variable. So in our case, we use main by default. But just remember that you have flexibility there. Next, we have the vertex input state, which normally includes the description of all the vertex attributes. In our case, we just set the type of the structure because we're not going to use vertex buffers today. So how do we get this nice triangle? Maybe you can already guess. Next, we have the pipeline input assembly state create info, which mainly includes the topology. Okay, so in our case, we have a triangle list, but if you want to change that, then this is another parameter which you will need to provide to this class. After that, we have the viewport and scissor. 
So both of them go into the pipeline viewport state create info. As you can see, we can actually provide an array of viewports and scissors. We have the count and the pointer to the first element of this array. In our case, we have a single element, so we have one structure for each of them. So for the viewport, we need to provide a starting pixel, which is 0, 0, and the width and height of the window. And this is why we provide a pointer to the GLFW window, because we use GLFW get window size here to get the width and height of the current window. And then we can set it here. We also need to set the minimum and maximum depth in the depth buffer. And we use zero to one by default. Same thing we have with the scissor. The scissor works very similar to the OpenGL scissor. It allows you to render into a subset of the viewport. In this case, we do the same, start from zero, zero, and the width and height are set to the width and height of the window. Next, we have the rasterization state. And this is where we can decide whether to render a wireframe or a full polygon mode. So as you can see here, we have the same option as in OpenGL, fill, the default, then line, which is wireframe, and point, which only renders the vertices. We also set the culling mode here. You can choose between front face culling, back face culling, front and back basically culls everything. Not sure why, why it is useful, but anyway, we will leave culling disabled for now. We also need to choose the front face. Okay, so counterclockwise or clockwise. Here we use counterclockwise and aligned width, which allows you to render thicker lines than the default. Next, we have multi-sampling, but we're not using multi-sampling at this point. So we use very basic settings here, okay? The rasterization samples is one bit. We disable sample shading and the minimum sample shading is one. Next, we have the color blending state, which allows you to blend between the output of the fragment shader and what's currently in the frame buffer. So we actually have two structures here. We have the color blend attachment state and the color blend state create info. So this guy needs to point to the blend attachment state using an array. Again, we have a single element here. So we set the blend enable to false and the color right mask in this case is not really important, but we do an or operation between all the channels. Now, as I said, the pipeline layout aggregates the descriptors of all the resources that are attached to the shaders. And we don't have any of these today, but we still need to create the pipeline layout handle. So we have the pipeline layout create info, but without any elements. And we call create pipeline layout to get a corresponding handle in the private attribute of the class. We are now ready to populate the graphics pipeline create info structure. In addition to all the parameters that we have seen, we also have the render pass. Okay, so this pipeline object is specific to a single sub pass in this render pass. We can now call create graphics pipelines, which takes the device and an array of pipeline create info structures. And this is because you can use a single call to create multiple pipelines. In our case, we have one, but we can provide the base address of an array of pipeline handles here. There is also a pipeline cache parameter as well as an allocator, which we are not using at this point, so null for both of them. So hopefully the pipeline is created successfully. Don't forget to verify it. And when we are ready to bind it, we call vkcmd bind pipeline. Okay, so this function takes the command buffer our pipeline handle and the binding point. Okay, so we have bind point graphics and bind point compute. There is also a ray tracing option here and these guys again, Huawei and Nvidia. Okay, we are now ready to take a look at the shaders. As I said, we don't have a vertex buffer and the reason is that the positions of the three vertices are simply stored here as a global array. And this allows us to postpone the topic of vertex buffers to the next tutorial and still be able to render something today. 
So for the jail position, we extend the current vertex position into a VEC4. This is a VEC2, okay, we only have X and Y. So Z is set to zero and W is set to one as usual. Now here's a question for you. This shader can be used in GLSL almost as is, except for one little change. Can you see it? So the answer is that in Vulkan GLSL, we use gel vertex index, whereas in OpenGL GLSL, we have ID instead of index here. But other than that, everything is the same. So finally, let's check the fragment shader. As you can see, we define the output color and we set it to some hard-coded color here. So that's it for today. As I said, in the next video, we'll take a look at vertex buffers. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.